Hello friends and welcome to another YouTube video. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I am finally bringing you the video that a lot of you have relentlessly asked for, which is how I film my YouTube videos and how I photograph my artwork for Instagram and for social media. And as an extra bonus, I will also be showing you guys how I film my uh, and how I set up my live streams as well for painting. So before I get into it, I do want just I just want to say that I've held off on making this video for a while because one, I knew it was going to be really difficult to film. So I do apologize that the lighting is a bit weird. Uh, and I also knew that my filming setup specifically for YouTube videos is janky. <laughs> it's like the only way I know how to describe it. Uh, and uh, after reevaluating, I realized that I actually think it was valuable to show you guys how I do it because if anything, it shows that you can be pretty resourceful and pretty crafty if um, you know, you've know you got a certain amount of tools um, available to you and you don't necessarily need to invest in you know thousands and thousands of professional um, film equipment. And um, yeah, so without further ado, let's do this, shall we? To film my YouTube videos, I use my phone. This is an old one that is going to be our placeholder since I'm actually using my phone to film this. I also have this tabletop tripod that has a phone holder attachment to it. This is the most important part. I find I actually don't use this tripod too often, but the phone holder on the top that you can unscrew off is very important. <laughs> I have this fairly standard photography tripod that I bought from Walmart, like probably over a decade ago. It's super cheap, nothing fancy. And then I have this photography tripod that I bought a number of years ago from Amazon. This one's much sturdier and is my main tripod for filming. Then this little photo light that was gifted to me. Then I've got this large photography softbox light that I bought earlier this year. And then finally we've got a shoelace, a cardboard tube, and something as a weight. <laughs> yeah, these, these items might seem weird, but it'll make sense in a second. The photography tripod I have here, I bought because I saw that it could swing out to be at a 90 degree angle. I figured this was the perfect way of filming overhead. The problem is, which I found out after I received it, was that there's actually no way of securely locking it into place at any horizontal angles. Its intention is only to be vertical. The swinging action is only for storing purposes. So even though I can tighten the gear to keep the head of the tripod at the desired 90 degree angle, the weight is very unbalanced. So to try and counteract the kind of tipping of the weight, my solution was to use the aforementioned shoelace to tie the furthest leg of the tripod to the leg of my desk. This was in hopes to prevent the whole thing from toppling over as soon as I added um, more weight to it, AKA a camera. And so to attach my phone to this tripod, I removed the phone holder from the tabletop tripod that I have and I mount it onto the large one. There's just this little screw that you can just put in there. And even though we've got the shoelace going on, um, as soon as you put a phone or camera onto it, the weight of it still makes it tip or has the arm slowly sag downwards over time. So the next thing is, uh, my next solution was, I found this cardboard shipping tube that is nearly the perfect height to hoist up the tripod arm. However, 
it is still prone to shaking if I, you know, nudge the table or if I'm, you know, erasing on my sketchbook a little bit too vigorously. And so the third element was to grab something that was fairly heavy in weight to try and help anchor it into place. Uh, it's not definitely not perfect, but it definitely helps uh, minimize the shaking. And because I'm right-handed, I keep the large light on the left side of the desk to fill in the shadows. And then I have the little light attached to the old tripod and have it positioned directly over my um, work surface. Up until February, I was only using this little light. Um, so like all my kind of older YouTube videos, such as the Jelly Gouache review, Paul Rubin's uh, watercolor review, the Mosery sketchbook review, um, all of those videos, I actually only use that little light on that old tripod and then natural daylight. So the kind of bigger light is definitely kind of a newer investment and not necessarily um, required because I was actually able to get by without it for quite a while. But yeah, this is what the overhead shot looks like. And like I said at the beginning, this is of course not a conventional way of setting up for YouTube videos. In the description below, I will link a tripod that actually is meant to be locked into place um, in the way that I thought my tripod was supposed to. And I will also link a YouTube video that uh, I came across recently that has a much more efficient YouTube filming setup. Oh, and to do my voiceovers, I use this microphone and microphone stand that I am borrowing from a friend. This mic is literally from the game Rock Band that I plug into my computer's USB port. Now, I very quickly want to show you guys how I set up my painting live streams. So the lights I position pretty much the same way, but for the tripod, I have the very fun task of dismantling my weird overhead setup and I extend the tripod legs to its longest length. With this setup, instead of having the tripod on the desk, I have it standing on the ground. Back in February, I got a standing desk, and so I have my desk cranked up to standing height and have the tripod as close to the desk as possible with the camera angled downwards over my workspace. And by camera, I mean phone. And then uh, during the stream, I will stand directly next to the tripod and that way I can see both my workspace and my phone screen so that I can see the chat room and interact with you guys and paint at the same time. So yes, all of those three hour painting live streams that I do on YouTube and Instagram, I am standing the entire time. <laughs> And from there, I will now show you guys how I photograph my artwork for social media. So for the surface, sometimes I will just use the wood tabletop or I also have this masonite board that is covered with a marble adhesive vinyl. I also sometimes use this surface to film my YouTube videos if I want um, the marble instead of the wood tabletop. And the nice thing about this vinyl is that it's quite easy to clean and is just like a nice um, kind of variation. And if I want solid color surfaces, I will just use these large sheets of Bristol paper that I have in a few different colors. And yeah, I'll pick my surface depending on the illustration that I'm photographing. Basically, I'll just pick whichever I think will suit it best. And even though you've now seen that I have studio lights, I actually prefer to photograph my work with natural sunlight. And as you might've seen, I have these pink curtains that I cover up, um, that I have closed uh, to cover up my window. So of course I open those up and I typically aim to photograph during the day around noon or whenever uh, there's good natural light. And if I'm photographing um, a piece of uh, paper that is kind of curled, I'll actually use some tape or a kneadable eraser to um, put on the back of the illustration. That way it keeps all of the edges as flat as possible for when I'm actually photographing it. And after the illustration is laid down flat, uh, depending on the piece, I will add in kind of decorative elements around it because I think it's just creates a nice setting for the illustration and I like the way that it looks uh, on my feed. And then with my phone or my iPad, I will just kind of stand 
over the illustration and take a few different um, photographs of it. And if I'm photographing a sketchbook page and the pages don't want to lay flat, I'll just use these little bulldog clips to clip it into place so that it stays flat for photographing. Plus I think it adds like a nice uh, kind of decorative element as well. And if the sketchbook um, is you know, being used with certain materials, then I'll also include those into the photograph. And then yeah, basically I'll just throw in random props that I have laying around, whatever I think suits the piece. And yeah, it's literally just knickknacks I've collected over the years. Like my favorites are these cute little crystals that I bought at some kind of market a number of years ago. And then I also have these fake flowers that I bought from the dollar store. And then I have these little uh, paper stars that I actually made myself from some scrap paper and a paper star punch. So yeah, I basically just use my own judgment and um, I will, you know, arrange these things into the photograph. And then I usually like to take a square shot, close up, and then a long shot for Instagram stories. And from there, I use a photo editing app called Color Story, but any editing app will do, even the one within Instagram's app itself. And basically, I will adjust the levels, saturation, temperature, sharpness, um, basically just little, little tweaks here and there to try and get the photograph to look as close to what I see in real life. And, uh, and then yeah, after I do all the editing, I will throw on a very subtle watermark and then it's ready for posting on my shop and or on social media. So yeah. Uh, I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, like I mentioned uh, at the, um, in the video, I will have links to um, a tripod that actually locks into place in a horizontal uh, fashion that uh, I hoped my actual tripod did. Uh, and then I will have um, a link to a really, really helpful YouTube video of how to um, set up a YouTube filming equipment thing uh, on one desk. Um, it's really, really useful. And honestly, I would uh, implore you guys to probably take the advice of that video more so than what I showed you here in terms of YouTube filming. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I hope that it was insightful, um, if anything. And uh, before we go, I also want to mention that we are so close to hitting my second milestone on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for your support. I... For my second milestone on Patreon, for those of you who don't know, I when I hit that milestone, I'm planning to allow uh, $5 patrons and uh, higher to submit their artwork to me for potentially a kind of art critique review in a video. So basically, depending on how many submissions I get, um, I'll have you guys um, on my Patreon page submit artwork that you want me to critique and then in a upcoming YouTube video, I'll spend some time kind of uh, going over what can be improved on. And um, yeah, I feel like this is this is kind of my way of trying to find some moments to do some kind of mentorship because I have gotten people requesting that here and there. And unfortunately, I just don't have the time and resources to uh, have one-on-one -on -one mentorship with each and every one of you but this is my way of at least being able to help some of you and then also hopefully um, even if your artwork is not selected that it can still be uh, educational and helpful for you to apply to your own artwork and your own art practices so yeah thank you guys so much obviously no pressure in uh, in terms of joining my patreon page just thought I'd mention it here and uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for your support, for watching my YouTube videos, for subscribing, anything, sh my shop, honestly, like really just thank you. <laughs> All right, so I'll see you in the next one. Bye.